Hey everybody, welcome back. So I thought I'd come on and just talk about um, a, a few, you know, I always talk about mindset as being so key in this process of recovery, as hard as it is to to work on our attitudes um, and to recognize that that might be the only thing in the moment that is within our control and that we are in charge of our attitude and our mindset Um, nobody else's. And of course, that can be really hard in this, given the fact that so much of what's going on on a chemical level, on a neurochemical level, can rob us of our sense of essence. It can rob us of our sense of esteem. It can rob us of our sense of security. It can rob us of our sense of ourselves. It can distort so many things that it's really hard to say, okay, we've got to come to rely on our own mindset and attitude at a time when we might feel the most less like ourselves that we've ever felt in our lives. And and that's, I've always said, that's kind of part of the irony of this situation is we have to rely on ourselves in a way, in a fundamental way that, that almost seems impossible. And yet really is probably the way through. And, um, you know, in thinking about how do we heal our nervous system and how do we work to continue to stay healed um i i just want to open this up and for would love to hear your thoughts about this but i've talked about this before but i you know before i got sick before i got the one two punch <clears throat> with my nervous system and it began with being floxed with the antibiotic but quite honestly i really felt i had healed from that um years had gone by and uh when the benzos entered the picture after my surgery <clears throat> a few years later it was an immediate uh, negative response. Um, and it was a, a lot of doing what we do and we don't know what's going on, which is let's add gabapentin, let's take gabapentin away, let's add, let's try a different benzo, let's take that away. You know, it, I was just, you know, s- s- you know, scrambling around in the dark like we all do in the beginning until we figure out the harsh reality that it's a nervous system injury. It's a harsh reality in that once we come to accept that that's what we've got, um, you know, we've, we, we have this indefinite period of time with this nonlinear healing process. And there can be some grief in that realization. As a matter of fact, I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, this is a hard sell. You know, I have some people in my life that are, it's very clear to me, are going through antidepressant and or benzodiazepine withdrawal. And they do not want to buy into that this is a nervous system injury. They're still on that hamster wheel of What's the next thing I can try? What's the next med I can try? I'll go to this hospital. I'll do this. And I pray that, that for them, maybe it'll work. Um, but it's a hard sell to say to somebody, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, you've gotten burned. You've gotten snared. And, and, and now you're in this camp over here. And it's not a life sentence. And it's not terminal. But it's going to be hard for a long time. That's a very hard sell. I've realized for people. It was for me. Um, I'm sure if you're listening to this, it's been for you. And I can appreciate why people keep scrambling around, you know, looking for the next right answer, the next thing that's going to take it away, you know. Uh, what's going to mop up all the glutamates? Let's give you an amenda. Or what's going to, you know, help the GABA receptor? You know, it, it, we, we just are scrambling. And that's if we even know that much. I mean, <clears throat> a couple of people in my life that are going through this, they don't want to know anything. They just want to keep following what the doctors are telling them to do. And unfortunately, they keep getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And so I realize, you know, it's kind of where I've said before, we're at least in the know. If you're listening to this, most likely you have, you have decided, yes, I know what's happened to me. Um, and no, I don't know exactly what the trajectory is going to look like. I, I don't know how long it's going to take. But I I know what's happened, and I don't have to close my eyes to it any longer. But again, a hard sell, right? Because we, you know, we don't have much to offer people when they say, okay, so it's a nervous system injury, now what? Well, now buckle up, and let's work on the few things we can change, like eating and drinking healthy, and trying to get as much sleep as you can, and trying to reduce stress, and trying to, you know, um, work on a mindset shift so that all of your thoughts and feelings and sensations in this don't scare the ever living shit out of you. And then you start adding fear to fear and terror to terror and agitation to agitation. Again, it's 
hard sell. We don't have a we don't have that magic product, right? That everyone's clamoring around for thirty nine. You ever see these things? I was just on one the other day, and it's like for thirty nine ninety nine. I was going to get this like secret sauce, you know, to learn how to, you know, change my diet the right way. Um, and and you know, I'd plug in the right anti low histamine foods and all that. But and then it, you know, you get to the end, and it's like, but wait. So you think it's thirty nine ninety nine, right? And then you know it's like they won't even let you get off the page before there's like the next thing you have to buy, and then there's the next video you have to watch to buy about the next product, and it goes on and on for hours. And it's this, I was like, wow, this is insane, um, you know what? How we get snookered into this stuff, and yet here we are as a group. You know, it's not like we're trying to pull people into our net. I mean, my God, we're happy when people don't land where we are, but we don't have much to offer other than support and you're not going to be in it alone and it is survivable and it is and and you'll heal and I really believe that so I was just thinking about you know the idea of our nervous systems and how how do we care for our nervous systems and how did we care for them before this and I'm not saying how did we care for them before this to point fingers or place blame okay we're not um having akathisia, tremors, chills, burning skin, blurry vision, POTS, uh, intrusive thoughts, terror, fear, insomnia, tonight. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, not, um, we're not experiencing this because we, you know, oh man, we, we, we pushed it a little too far you know, over the last weekend, you know, no, we, we've clearly had a chemical assault. Okay, there, there's, just, there's just no denying that. And I don't know about you guys, but I can feel it. It it, it feels toxic. It, there's it feels chemical to me. Um, so I, I you know anyway. But my point is is that as I've talked about in other videos or audios about allostasis, which is that any living organism's innate capacity to regulate itself, and how any living organism can get out of allostasis and go into what's called allostatic overload, which is what's happened to us. So I think about my benzo injury as the one-two punch that knocked me out. Um, I was in the ring before and I was taking some hits and I was talking to a colleague the other day about the nervous system and what I'm learning about it and you know how much we take it for granted. We don't even actually know it's there until it becomes a problem, right? We don't really think about our nervous system as anything. I never really, I mean, my God, I was in the field and I didn't give it much consideration. It, I took it for granted. It was working for me until it went out like a bad back, right? And then all of a sudden I was acutely aware of my nervous system. Just like when you have a back injury, suddenly you're acutely aware of your back. Up until the injury, you're not really waking up each day going, oh, thank you back, you know, for holding me up and letting me lift things and letting me walk around without pain. Like you just, you're living your life taking your back for granted. And I was walking around taking my nervous system for granted, which again, one of the gifts in this, I think for us is that when we get on the other side, we won't ever take that nervous system for granted again, because we now know something that not only do most people not know, but most medical professionals don't know. We know something that most of the most highly trained mental health and medical health professionals do not know which is that when the nervous system goes into allostatic overload for whatever reason, a, 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 an extreme trauma, um, you know, like I said, one year too many in an abusive marriage, one drink too many, one pill too many, one adverse reaction too many, whatever it is that tips that scale for each person and it's different for each of us. And so most, most human beings maybe never reach allostatic overload and God bless them. And they never have to come face to face and get to know their nervous system. But one of the things we're going to walk out of this knowing intimately is, again, something that most medical and mental health professionals do not know, which is that when you go into allostatic overload, it is not short term and it is not linear and it can literally be a shape shifter in the craziest of ways, mentally, physically, spiritually, cognitively, behaviorally. Again, no stone left unturned. And that's, you know, how do you treat that, right? I mean, you know, again, that's, we live in this day and age of medical specialties, right? And and I know that I ran the gamut of when I got flocks to my nervous system, 
went out for the first time, I was seeing eight or nine different specialists. And every single specialist was looking at, you know, the heart, the lungs, the ears, the eyes, the brain. And nobody was looking at my system overall and saying, wow, like holistically, you've had a shot to your nervous system. And so all of these systems are impacted potentially. And all of them were. And all of them are again, you know, for me. Um, cognitively is the one area, and I'm not going to say it's a small area. It's, um, it's a huge blessing, which is why I do these vi- audios is because cognitively I've remained intact and I can do the research. I can see what's out there and try to synthesize it and then report it back to you guys as best I can. But my point in bringing all that up is that, you know, we really didn't know our nervous systems before and we're never going to not know them now, right? We can't unsee what we've seen. So as we heal and when we heal, we're always going to be paying attention to that in ourselves and in other people. And I was talking to this colleague of mine, my best friend who I did my doctoral work with at Smith, and we were talking the other day about just our profession and especially being in as a private practice clinician and we were talking about isn't it ironic that to be a good clinician a good therapist you have to be you have to hide and we kind of got into the conversation about what is the impact on a nervous system and so we were giving the example of she'd gone through something horrific in her life that over a course of several years and had to keep working and you know, she could be on the phone call, a phone call getting terrible news and then an hour later have a client and have to, you know, regroup. And in many ways, it was good for her as a healthy distraction and it, she was able to remain present and, and focused. But it, we thought about it from her perspective and mine, like over the years, you know, I could be, let's say I got in a terrible fight with my partner and then I've got to go in and do four hours of couples therapy sessions the next day while my head's ringing from my own personal trauma in my really, you know, and as the client walks in and says, how you doing, Jen? I don't say, well, sit down. Let me tell you how shitty it's been for the last two days. You know, I have to say, I'm okay. Thanks. Come on in. And I basically have to tell my nervous system, sit down and shut up. I'll tend to you later. Right now I've got to make space for this person. And as I was thinking about this, I was like, yeah, that's not unique to therapists though, right? Granted, you know, when I worked in hospital settings, I had colleagues and I could call in help and aid if I needed it. Private practice, I didn't have that. It's certainly not unique to therapists. If you're a mom or a dad or a, a, you know raising grandchildren or children or you're a teacher or you know or you know whatever's going on and I'm talking about pre-benzo injury by the way. I'm talking about just a living life that we have to think about what's the you know what are the what are the roles we're in? And in those roles, how many times a day or a week do we have to say to our nervous systems, sit down and shut up? You know, you're, you're a mom and you've gotten in a fight with your ex-husband. You've got to tell your nervous system, sit down and shut up. You're shaky. You're angry. You're enraged. You're scared. You're terrified. Whatever. Sit down and shut up. I got to tend to the kids. Sit down and shut up. I got to tend to this client. You're a, you're a surgeon. You're an OBGYN. You're a doctor. Sit down and shut up, nervous system. I've got to take care of this patient. And so again, it's not unique to necessarily being a therapist, but it made me slow down and think, wow, how many, I was a therapist for 27 years. How many times over those 27 years was I going through something in my personal life that was really, really powerful or traumatic or difficult? And I had to basically tell my nervous system, sit down and shut up. This isn't about me. This is about this. And it wasn't like I had a job where I was, you know, staring at a computer screen. I could get lost and, you know, I had to be fully on and present. And again, not unique to a therapist. Parents, teachers, coaches, doctors, lawyers, nurses, you know, whatever you are. Um, if, if You know, there's so many times in our lives. And so it was just an interesting conversation about how I was living my life before and not really even considering how often I was telling my nervous system, shut up, I'll tend to you later. And then did I? I don't know. I mean, I think my nervous system got used to being told to sit down and shut up and it would get to me, I'd get to it later. And I'm not so sure I ever got to it later because, you know, maybe my day would end and, you know, I'd, I'd just go home and eat something or I'd go home and tend to whatever I had to tend to. But I don't know that I ever circled back to my nervous system to think about what am I doing for you today? You know, and again, it's like a back injury. You know, once you've injured your back good, 
you know, the we have to think about what am I doing on a regular basis proactively to now help my back be stronger so that I'm less prone to injury. And so one of the things that we're faced with while we're going through this hell is we're trying to learn the skills to be better at taking care of our nervous systems by reducing stress, by not shoving it in the corner, by walking it, by feeding it, by hydrating it, by giving it sunshine, by giving it hopefully some positive exchanges with people in our lives, um, by you know learning about the vagus nerve, by learning about our mindset and the power of our mindset, the power of how we use our minds to navigate this brain injury, this nervous system injury, right? And you know if you have a lot of like I, I know some people now that are going through like a lot of, um, you know, histamine issues and chemical sensitivities and all these things. And, and of course, when you really look at some of the top treatments for that, you're looking at things like DNRS, you're looking at, at, at neural retraining systems, which are all about cognitive reframing. It's all about where you put your attention. Are you watering the weeds? Are you focused on how scared you are? about everything that's going in your body or how it could hurt you. And and so, you know, again, I'm not minimizing people with digestive issues or histamine. Believe me, I've, I've had my share of those as well. But I am saying that it, it even some of the top approaches towards um, healing the gut, which we know kind of the gut and the brain kind of work hand in hand, the gut and the nervous system are highly tied. There's a, you know, a high concentration of GABA receptors in our gut. We know that that one of the the one of the most um, it seems efficacious treatments is to begin to heal our mindset and our attitude and reduce our fear about the food we're taking in, the chemicals around us, and as people kind of retrain their limbic system through DNRS. Um, I'm trying to think of what the other one's called. Um, there's Annie Hoppers. Hers might be DNRS. I'll have to look up the others, but. When you look at the crux of what they are, there are a lot of visualization, there are a lot of cognitive reframing, which is again, kind of shifting the story you tell yourself about what's going on with you. And so, but going back to what I was saying is we are in the midst of just hell, trying to stay afloat while we're trying to practice what it is to take care of our nervous systems for the first time, maybe ever, because who the hell's paying attention. You know, I mean, I guess, yes, I do. I have friends and that were doing a lot of yoga and a lot of mindfulness stuff. Yeah. And I would do some of that occasionally. Um, but no, I was kind of living life and I don't know about you guys, but life with technology and kids and a large family, um, I was just going, going, going. And again, you know, taking the back for granted, taking the nervous system for granted, right? So now we're, we're learning how to take care of ourselves, but unfortunately, there's two things happening. One is we're having to do it at a time where we're not going to see an immediate result. So before injury, you start doing yoga and breathing exercises and vagus nerve exercises and visualizations and cognitive reframing. You're going to see some pretty good results. When you're coming from a deficit model and an injury, you're going to do those things. You're probably going to feel just as much shit as you did before. But the goal is you're, 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 you're putting in the positive bids and you're putting them in the bank and you're making an investment for six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, four years from now. But that's really hard to do. You know, we're not, most of us are not that great at that level of delayed gratification. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a very delay in gratification. And so as we're having to learn about our nervous system, learn for the first time, maybe really how to tend to it and take care of it and pay attention to it. We're doing at a time where the payoffs are not going to be immediate. They're not going to be great. Um, but but the good news is, is that on the other side of this, we are going to have that skill set. We are going to know how to breathe. We are going to know how to regulate stress, hopefully a little bit better. We are going to be more thoughtful about what we're feeding our brain. You know, if you've been like me where periods of time I've not been able to listen, I still struggle to listen to music um, or watch a lot of TV, but there were times I couldn't do take in any at all. And if I look at it now and I'm like, my nervous system was telling me what it needed. It needed 
it, you know, I, I was only looking at it as how broken I was. I was never looking at how watching TV or listening to music or talking on the phone, I was only seeing that as broken and what's wrong with me rather than my nervous system's telling me something. It's telling me it was never designed to take in as much stimulation as I've been giving it for 52 years. And that's just a truth, and I really believe that. I do not believe that the way technology has advanced in the last, let's just say, 40 years, there is no way that our brains and our nervous systems have caught up, nor will I think they ever necessarily catch up, nor would I necessarily want them to. But the reality is is that we're breaking down left and right. I mean, this is why, you know, suicidality, suicidal gestures, suicide completions, anxiety, depression, uh, burnout, um, all kinds of, and then all kinds of autoimmune disorders. I mean, we're breaking down and we're breaking down because we were never designed to go this fast and to take in this much. And so what's happened to us is we've taken a two by four to the head, which quite frankly, I probably needed because I think anything less than a two by four to the head, I wouldn't have slowed down. Well, something stepped in and was like, well, you don't have much choice. Like, guess what? You don't get to choose to, you know, lay in a quiet room and, and just be silent uh, versus uh, and breathe versus watch, you know, two back-to-back football games. We're not going to let you watch two football games. Your brain is simply not going to allow it. Your nervous system is going to light up. And so it took the two by four to my head to really be able to recognize like, oh, wait, I can't do these things anymore. And yes, I can stay focused on the story that I can't because I'm broken, or I can choose with my mindset to look at it as my nervous system is teaching me something. It's teaching me maybe I was never supposed to be in front of a screen eight to 12 hours a day. For some people, 16 to 20 hours a day. I mean, it's insane. I don't think we were meant to do that. I know that I wasn't, but I did it. Maybe I wasn't meant to work 60 hours a week. Maybe I wasn't meant to be a caregiver for as many people as I was a caregiver for. Maybe I wasn't meant to just plug holes. Clearly I wasn't because guess what? The two by four came and it showed me I couldn't do it. And so, you know, even though I I can pinpoint, you know, when I... And enter benzos, and here comes the, the 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 point of no return and the change in my system. We are being taught how to take care of our nervous systems, and how to be aware of them. And even though the payoff is not immediate, and it sucks to do all the right things and to feel like, what is the point? What is the point of eating flaxseed and hemp seed and you know balancing my macros to make sure that my diet is right and clean and whole foods and whole water if I can? And you know, what's the point of trying to clean up my diet, make sure I'm hydrated, move my body if I can, get some sunlight? reduce my stress, work on my mindset, fo- look at what I'm feeding my brain, look at where I'm putting my thoughts and my water, like, all, you know, all this stuff. What's the point of all that if I'm not going to feel better? Like, again, that's the absurdity and that's where we have to recognize what we're doing is we're putting money in the bank for a day much further down the road, a day that will come and everything we're going to do, everything we're learning is going to pay off. And I'm not saying... There's a way to do this. Eat this way, take this supplement, don't take this. Sum- I'm not doing that because quite frankly, I just don't think that's helpful. I haven't found a prescription or a formula that, that is um, universal, so I'm not going to even go down that path. But I am going to say that you know we're learning all kinds of things. We're learning that we have a nervous system. We are learning the power of that nervous system. We are learning that we will never take it for granted again. Okay, and we have to be extra careful with it. We have to get to know it. And it's like nobody else's nervous system. We have to know that we can't trust anybody else with that nervous system. You know, I'd love to say, here's Dr. So and so, trust him with your nervous system. I haven't met that doctor. And I think I told you the most honest exchange I had with a doctor was a was a a person who'd been a psychiatrist for a long time, was retired and was starting to just help people. And he got on the phone with me and heard my story 
And at the end of it, he said, Jennifer, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you were a cucumber and you became a pickle. And now you want to be a cucumber again. And it's not that easy. It's not going to happen like that. And at first I took that as complete catastrophic, you know, um, a completely catastrophic statement. But now I know what he means. And he didn't mean I wasn't going to heal but I'm not going to be I'm not going to be that same cucumber. You know, that cucumber before I turned into a pickle was naive. Um I worked in a field where I think I should have known better but I didn't. Um I overtaxed my system because I didn't really know what it meant to actually care for a nervous system or what it even meant to have one truly and the impact it has on us as a human being on all levels and I think I now know what he means. I'm going to heal. You're going to heal. But we're not going to be that same cucumber again because we know something different now forever for ourselves and for our friends and our loved ones. Um, And this has changed us. It's changing us. And it doesn't have to change us for the worse. You know, it can change us for the better. What's that song in Wicked that just reminded me of my my favorite Broadway show, Wicked, about the change being for the better. But... I guess their friendship, I can't remember. But anyway, I wanted to come on today and just talk about this. And, and you know, one of the things we're also really learning in spades in this process is humility. The humility to not know. You know, we are learning what it means to be not in control and uncertain and vulnerable in spades. Let me repeat that. We are learning how to not be in control, how to be uncertain, and how to be vulnerable in spades. And what I mean by that is that, 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 you know, that can be, it can feel like a curse right now while we're going through it because that's the recipe for intense anxiety. But as it's being forced upon us, we can master that. And so as we come through this on the other side, we will get on the other side. um, We're going to know that it's an illusion of control. We're going to know that it's an illusion of certainty, and we're going to know that everyone's vulnerable. And because we'll know those things, we're going to have so much more empathy for ourselves and compassion for ourselves and empathy for other people. But we're also going to be able to hopefully slow down to that speed of wisdom and live our lives differently, you know, hopefully without a ton of jadedness and skepticism, but turning that jadedness and that skepticism into discernment and good good problem solving. And again, that humility of saying, you know, I don't know, but I'm not going to leave you alone. You know, I don't, I don't know your answer, but I'm not going to leave you alone in it. Because that's what we're learning to do with each other. We don't know, but we're not going to face it alone. Anyway, I hope this was helpful, guys. Just wanted to come on and speak again, just some thoughts I'm having and, and uh, things I'm learning in this process. So take good care.